This is my 1987 BMW K75. It's the base model with no fairings, so it's not even the K75C. I've had it since the year 2000. I'm just prepping it for its MOT, and I've noticed the last few times that I've been out that at some point or other it will give one really big fat misfire and it backfires and everyone looks at you and uh, you have to pretend it wasn't you. There's usually three things that cause a, a backfire. Either the metal has perforated in here and there's a pinhole and the air's getting in. The copper seals have failed or the joint here has worked loose. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the entire exhaust off and give it a good going over and replace the copper seals. I have already taken the suspension bracket off because that was really rusty and needed refurbishing. This is the suspension bracket and it's got a rubber block inside it um, and it was really quite rusty so I've stripped it and cleaned it and I've painted it very thickly with Hammerite Smooth probably more thickly than I needed to but that will last about five years of normal use. Um, the trouble with this is you can't strip it with a heat gun because of this rubber block that really wants to melt. Um, I'm also going to treat it to a lovely new shiny bolt. Having removed the suspension bracket this now is free to move up and down and I'm now going to take it apart at the joint. Um, mine hasn't got a standard Allen head on it, that's one that I fitted a long time ago, it's a stainless steel one. And you can also see there's some exhaust paste there, because I will be repairing this exhaust paste, not the peculiar mineral gasket that came with it, which is almost impossible to get back in. Well I might have found the cause of the backfire almost straight away, I haven't even undone that bolt yet, but the whole thing moves. Which obviously it shouldn't. <laughs> So air's getting in there and maybe that's causing the backfire. We'll still do the entire job though, there's no point in just doing half of it. Wait for the noisy cars to go by. It's supposed to be on lockdown. I put a spanner, 13mm spanner on the back of it and a nail and wrench to undo that and that undid rather easily. And I've got a feeling this is just going to just pull off. So if that had a BMW gasket in it, it looks like a metal cylinder and it completely breaks up into tiny little silver shards and goes all over your pavement. So for the last 15 or so years I've been using exhaust paste and that does just as good as job and it's much easier to put on. For most of this job you can use the tools in the BMW toolkit, but to get these off you need a long reach socket and a couple of extension bars. These are 13mm, um, all of mine are stainless steel and a while ago I had to replace all the studs which are not stainless steel, they're mild steel um, and they were absolute buggers to get out. There's only one left holding it on there. Um, what has happened though is that three of the studs have come out with the nut now that's not such a big deal because that means you can put them back in. It's when you can't undo them and they strip the nuts that it ruins it for you. So we'll just take the last one off. So mine are actually pretty easy to undo because it was only about four years ago that I did this. If you've left it for a really long time, you'll find that they're incredibly difficult to undo. And they'll all be rusty and you may end up having to destroy some of them to get them off. Here's the last one. And that just then drops down like that. Now I've got engine bars on my bike so I've got to fiddle it out to get it out. And it maybe gets to the point where you realise, oh, the engine bars are going to have to come off. I don't remember having to take them off before. Right, there we go. Uh. So there's the manifold. You can see it's got the obligatory dent in it from crashing the bike and uh, denting it with the engine bars. These are quite rusty, but they're probably not as bad as they look. What is a bit more concerning is this. This is a mixture of petrol and oil that's come out of the middle cylinder. 
So that quite obviously um, is leaking. Now the bike hasn't been run for, God, maybe three months because of uh, the lockdown, the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, I haven't even run the engine up, so that may just be natural seepage. Uh, it is slightly concerning that it is doing that. I may have to look into why. Otherwise, this is in reasonable condition. It's not broken, it's a bit dirty, but you can clean these with wonder wheels, which is what I shall do. Uh, a lot of the work now is just cleaning the thing up. Now, you have to remember though, that the three copper seals are still up in there. So we need to prise those seals out before we put the new ones in. Otherwise that will leak very embarrassingly. I wasn't going to take the engine bar bracket off, but the thing is so hideously rusty that I thought I might as well take it off and completely refinish it while I'm doing this job. These engine bars, I bought them a year after I bought the bike in 2001, um, when they were still about 120 quid. They're ridiculously expensive for what they are, and to be honest, they're not that good, but I have made use of them, and it did protect the engine, so I didn't smash the engine. Um, so I'll stick with them. So while that's soaking in, I'll go and do something else. So in my man box of service parts that I've yet to use, um, but I buy en masse because it's far cheaper to buy a load of stuff and pay one lot of postage and keep it for the future than it is to buy one bit at a time. There's the exhaust rings that need to go back in. So that's the three gaskets out. I've had to use a sharp screwdriver and a hammer to get under the edge of each one just to tap them out because I didn't want to come out. And that's what the new ones look like. I shall coat those with copper rees to hold them in place when I put them back. That'll act as an adhesive to hold it in place so it doesn't keep falling out when you're trying to put it together. It's copper, the same as the uh, copper ceiling ring. Wonder Wheels is really good for getting all the baked on crap and the brake dust and sort of crust that you get off the road. But it does leave the stainless steel looking very dull. So. The answer to that is Solval Autosol. So with Solval Autosol, rub it in with your hands and then buff it off with a cloth. And it brings it up lovely and shiny. Now, because I haven't done this for a really long time, I'm gonna to have to do this twice. But that is 10 times better than it was before I took it off the bike. I've burnished this up as much as I can so it's nice and shiny but there's not really too much merit in doing loads of work on it because 50 miles down the road in the rain and it'll all be filthy again. What's worth looking at though is that part there. This is the front cylinder and you can see that it corrodes away. So I think the pipe is stainless but this is steel so you can probably rebuild that with weld. The other thing to remember is that when you look down inside it is that the stainless steel part comes right up to the top so that's got to go all the way through before it's perforated enough to give you backfiring so this should last me another couple of years yet It's really worth getting these locking nuts with the flanges on them. These are stainless steel ones because they sit in the socket and don't keep falling out of place all the time. So they're all in, but it's not tight yet. This is, this will still move. And the reason I've done that is I want to put the exhaust pipe on before I do these up tight so that I don't stress them and loosen them off. So all I've got to do is put the exhaust pipe back onto there and I will be using Holtz fire gum which is uh, a lubricant for fast and easy assembly self-sealing, heat setting, resists vibration and lasts for years and it is so much easier than putting the BMW mineral gasket in I need to put the hanger back on and it's handed you can see it's got a hole and a dimple which corresponds to the hole in the bracket so that goes on that way round. When you come to put the bracket back on, note that it's got a tag and a cutout just there. 
so that goes into there. Now I shall actually put fire paste underneath that as well as in there and on the exhaust. That's all pasted up ready to go. That's all pasted up ready to go. Just a matter of screwing it all together now. Right, so slide that into position and then use the hanger to get it right into place. So you know you've got exactly where it's supposed to be. When you're putting the manifold back on, tighten all the nuts down so they're nice and firm and then in pairs crush the copper gasket down so it's all nicely seated. It is actually worth coming back the next day and um, doing them again just to make sure that they haven't eased off. Finally do up the bracket, get that really nice and tight so it's crushed the flange down and you can see all of the fire paste ooze out um, and then that's the, more or less the job finished. Now all we need to do is run the bike up to heat this up, get this really hot so this all um, uh, sets properly. I just need to run it up for a couple of minutes to set off the exhaust paste and what I'm going to expect is lots of little vapours and fumes coming off it from the various cleaners and things I put on. So, I haven't started it for ages. Uh, no choke, here we go. Ooh, sounds cool. Right, so what we're going to expect is down there, smell it quite well. Right. So it's quite a lot of smoke and oil being burnt off here. Um, the bike hasn't been run for weeks and weeks, so they are famous for getting oily. That is rather oily. So that's been running for about five minutes now and the exhaust is down to normal. Um, it was extremely oily, I and mean, I must admit it hasn't been ridden for two months. But uh, obviously oil was getting through the engine. It's always a fatal error to put these bikes on their side stands. The oil drips into the cylinders, makes them smoke like hell. I often wonder how they pass the emissions test. <laughs> 